um, and the plant architecture, uh, which gives you information of, about node distances, um, uh, leaf bending, in the indices, all these things which, uh, which uh, yeah, describe the, the plant's architecture. You see some three examples of very different uh, maze architectures on the, uh, on the right side. And of course, these are numbers in the end. These are not images, but behind these uh, images are numbers which then can be correlated to, to genomic data or to experimental data. And that's actually the key um, advantage of such a system. So it's not like a scoring, a uh, subjective scoring, but it's really a reproducible measurement. And, and what can this give us? Uh, because, I mean, I just uh, showed you some corn plants which look nice and the architecture can be quantified, but for instance, with these crops, uh, populations of crops, you also have different phenotypes or different architectures, but it's really hard to, to somehow differentiate these things. You see that they don't look alike and that there are differences, but you want to uh, quantify. And the challenge, of course, is to find those parameters which really uh, enable you to distinguish between different phenotypes or different classes, which of course should have biological relevance uh, to your experiment. So in this case, we just plotted the, the excess momentum right ratio versus the bending in the index, and, and you see that the different uh, groups nicely, uh, the different classes nicely group up in this parameter room, and there are lots of different examples. Uh, for such classifications, which are far beyond the human classification. We always talk about things like compactness or bushiness or whatsoever, but these are very subjective things, while here you really have numbers. Yeah, the near infrared imaging, uh, as I already said, gives you information about the water um, distribution in the plant. What you see here is the wheat plant. Uh, uh, drying over 16 hours and you can really see how uh, the, the, the gray shade of the plant, which is a, a, a measurement for the uh, ref, uh, reflection or for the absorption as well, uh, gets brighter and brighter so the water disappears. There's less water so there's less absorption so the plants get brighter. We did a, a color coding with, it, with this to, to highlight it and you can see how the data nicely shows uh, the water uh, contents going down. This is the same uh, image for uh, some salads. Uh, in this case, uh, it was interesting uh, to, to measure the shelf life of, of salads, and you can see that the top the salad, the iceberg salad, which is represented in the top data, has the longest shelf life because it, uh, it's uh, yeah, the iceberg catches uh, because it doesn't dry out so fast. The flow light uh, mostly is used for measuring the chlorophyll contents uh, of plants, which also gives you uh, a good um, a value about the fitness or the state of the plant. And we use the red, uh, um, the red excitation of chlorophyll here. Uh, and you can really see uh, the different uh, uh, intensity of that sigma on the right side. So with the leaf, uh, uh, that's the same. And last uh, but not least, the scanning uh, with infrared light. Uh, yeah, here you can see that the left plant uh, probably needs some water. Um, uh, already in the, in the visible light image, you wouldn't need the, the, the infrared light image, but you can see that the temperature of the well water plant on the right side is much cooler than of the drying out plant. Uh, however, there are examples where you wouldn't see it on the, on the visible light image and just on the infrared uh, image. So that's. Uh, uh, of course, uh, another sensor for drought stress experiments. And then, um, as already mentioned, the root columns with, um, uh, with uh, visible light, uh, where we measure root architecture, like the ratio of uh, horizontal roots versus uh, vertical roots, the uh, performance of the root in correlation to certain stresses, like drought or whatsoever. Um, and we just measure the root when it appears on the transparent um, uh, vessel, the root column. Um, so it's a non-destructive measurement, but you don't see the whole root, but it gives you already a lot of information about it. Uh, like you can see here over time how the root develops, and then you can really see different root development patterns for different species. 
Um, and the near infrared uh, signal of the root again gives you the water distribution, and by that you actually <coughs> measure the root activity, uh, which uh, of course is also very interesting because the root is actually supplying the plant with water, and that's uh, a very important thing. What we actually do is we measure um, column soil columns uh, without plant the same way as. Uh, soil columns uh, with a plant in the root and we water them the same way because there's lots of water dynamics in such a soil column due to capillarity or evaporation uh, and as we have a background uh, measurement with the empty column then we can <coughs> subtract that background uh, uh, water dynamics and then we're left with the water dynamics in the column uh, due to uh, root activity. Yeah, the moving field, that's um, the, the conveyor belt technology, the most, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the highest advantage of that, of course, is that you increase your throughput without increasing the manpower, but you always, uh, you also standardize your growth conditions and you can really apply uh, watering and weight stations where you really uh, individually water each plant uh, due to a certain plan and not with these irrigation systems where you water all the plants the same way. And you can have um, pest management in the greenhouse by these uh, spraying stations to keep uh, your greenhouse um, yeah, clean and not contained. And it also is a very uh, efficient way of using greenhouse space because you actually don't need any service aisles uh, between those conveyor belts um, as you need for greenhouse benches. These are actually some uh, photos uh, uh, which were shot at the uh, plant accelerator in Adelaide. Uh, this is a typical green out where we have the, the high density in the greenhouse and then the scanning uh, uh, a circle in another compartment where the scanners are. But this can be laid out in any configuration. Meanwhile, we also um, <coughs> adapted this technology to smaller conveyor belts or smaller plants in growth chambers. This is an aerodidopsis chamber at IPK where the scanners are outside of the Johnson Control growth chamber and uh, the Arabidopsis plants are moved uh, in the growth chamber on the small conveyor belt. And we also have the, the 30 kilogram system for very big plants, um, which can also, uh, also hold trees or other big plants on the conveyor belt. That's also an impression from IPK. That's the very big system we supply. So yeah, finishing my uh, um, presentation with that conclusion, the thing is that modern breeding uh, methods or GMO methods are really able to produce lots of varieties, but the question is uh, what do we do with these uh, varieties and with the scanalyzer system you really uh, can yeah, detect or discover the one which is relevant for you, which has the trait which you want to have. Just for an example, uh, the, uh, that was a calculation done by Mark Tester for the plant accelerator, the plant, so that's for the Australian market, the 3% increase in value is worth 50 million Australian dollar if it obtains 10% market penetration and it is released two years earlier. So being fast also gives you some re revenue and that's actually uh, from our side as a, as a company um, a good argument to invest in such a technology. Um, plus uh, the automatic screening is much more efficient than human screening. Here are some uh, references, lots of companies are using the, the technology already and also public research institutes. And with that I'd like to thank you for your attention.